naming your files. Here's the scenario, and I'm going to tell you right up front. This lesson, you're not going to see any of the software itself. We're going to go over something that I believe is critically important in preparation for using software like PDF to Excel. And I'll give you the scenario. As I mentioned in the course overview, you're going to have situations where you're using the software where you might have a long list of PDFs that were, let's say, downloaded from the client's bank account. And those PDFs often come in some, kind of, kind of, some sort of generic naming convention like e-statement, and then it'll have dash 01, dash 02, because for each successive download, Windows, for example, might um, append the file name if, it comes, if they all come down with the same name. Some banks are better than others. Bottom line is this. You're going to have a list of PDF files that really don't sort well, or for that matter, even let you know from looking at the name what month's statement that you're looking at. So I have a standard file naming convention that I use that A, will let you know a, a lot of the high-level information that you need to know about the statement before you even open it up, and B, will make sure that the files themselves sort well, even if you're going across years. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you get into the rest of this lesson as far as what I'm going to show you in terms of how I name the PDF files and why I name them precisely the way that I do. Let's uh, go ahead and see what this looks like. We're going to be using a sample set of bank statements here. Um, I'll be honest, these are actually a real live client's bank statements, which as you can see are from 2014, which I need to convert for him. And I'm going to do it using PDF to Excel. Of course, I'm going to blur out any client-specific information. But before I start converting, and I wanted to do this lesson, even though it doesn't specifically relate to how to use PDF to Excel, I think it's important to you know lay this out up front because when you're going to work on a project like this, it's going to be important to keep it organized. The problem with the way these PDFs are named is it's going to sort alphabetically, right? So I have April and August. I don't want that. I want this sorted in chronological order. So what I like to do is I like to name it this way. I'm going to take April 2014 and I'm going to rename it and we're going to call this 04 right so that it comes up number four I don't like the lowercase lettering April 2014 now the other thing I'm going to do is as follows because I don't even like to name it as simply as this I'm actually pretty detailed with the way I name these things so we're going to open this up and we're going to see that uh, the bank account is with and this is the funniest thing. This is, it's funny, I picked this on purpose because it's such a poorly formatted bank statement to begin with. Um, you don't even see what bank this is with, uh, and I need to find that because that's how I like to name it. There it is. So it's Comerica Bank. The only way you know what bank it is is that it's down here in the address where it says write to us. I mean, the bank name should be prevalent right up at the top. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up Notepad real quick. And because this is how I'm going to get down the naming convention that I want. So it's really going to be Comerica, right? And then the last four digits of the account number. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to blur it out for, you know, when I edit the video, of course. And then I'm going to say, at the beginning, we're going to say 04 Comerica because, again, I want this to, uh, to sort that way. Or actually, I take that back. I've changed around the way I name these things because as long as they're all starting with Comerica and the account number, then they're all going to sort the way I want them to. So now what I like to do is 2014, the year first, dash, 04, dash, and what's the closing date? 30. So now I have 2014, April 30th. That's how we're going to name this. So I'm going to copy that from my notepad, move that over to my other screen. We're going to close this. This is almost like a lesson in how to use Windows to name and organize files. But I think it's important. And now that I have that, what I can do is, now, so now I have August 2014. So you do have to pop open each one because, you know, the, the closing date can change. So this is going to be August 31st, right? So now I can rename it, paste it all in, but now it's going to be 8-31. So it starts to get easy to rename this. This is going to be probably 1231, but again, never assume. Because as soon as you assume that it's always going to be the last day of the month, you'll get one that uh, cuts off on the 30th in a, in a month that's got 31 days. So this is, in fact, 1231. 
and you get the idea. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me rename all these, but I wanted you to see this right up front. I think it's important before you work on a project like this that you get these named correctly so that they sort properly, so that it's very easy to work with and start from January and work through December and know where you're at in the process. I, I just find that it, if you take a little bit of time to do something like this up front, it makes your life so much easier in the long run. So if you've got a set of statements that you're going to be using to work with while you're watching the video, and I highly recommend that you learn that way, is, you know, if you haven't already, go get yourself a set of statements. Even if they're ones you don't need to convert, just so you can follow along with what I'm doing in each of these lessons and use PDF to Excel to get the data converted from the PDF to Excel. And then we're going to do some manipulation in Excel. So you're going to learn some Excel in this course as well. Uh, you know, probably some of the same stuff that I've taught in the Mastering Excel for accounting pros, but obviously in the context of how to, what to do with it once you get it into Excel. So that, my friends, is my story on naming the files and why I think that's important right up front. Get comfortable with this. Get PDF to Excel installed on your computer. Get a set of statements that you can work with so you can follow along with me. That's the only way you're going to learn how to do this stuff properly. I'll see you in the next lesson. As you can see, when you name your files properly, it's going to make your whole workflow process much easier, much more streamlined. And for that matter, it's going to make a real difference in terms of what you're going to see in the rest of this course. And for that matter, when and how you're going to use this product in your own actual use cases. So just as a matter of practice, what I would suggest is grab a set of sample PDF downloads that you can get even from your own bank account and just kind of name them according to the convention that I've just shown you. This way you can follow along and keep up with me throughout the rest of the course. As I'm going to invite you to do, starting in the next section, you're going to be asked to try and do some of the same things I'm doing with the product. So in the next lesson, we're going to start taking a look at basic layout and conversion on a bank statement in the PDF format.